Hi, my name is Seth Winkler. Welcome to Theory 101. And we will be dealing in today's session with pitch notation. Uh, it's important, though, that you've uh, listened to the first session because this is basically a continuation. Okay, so let's start. Music is generally notated on a staff, which, as you can see, is five horizontal lines. The musical notes are placed on the lines and in the spaces of the staff according to their pitch. Pitch obviously refers to how high or low a note sounds. The higher a note sounds in pitch, the higher it is on the staff. The lower the note sounds in pitch, the lower it is on the staff. As you can see, a stave has five lines, four spaces in the middle, and it has spaces on the outside. If a sound is too high or too low, then the stave can be extended using ledger lines. Ledger lines are used for notes that are outside the range of the staff. There are also different kinds of staffs depending on the clef sign it has. Clef signs are placed at the beginning of the staff, showing the pitch of a specific staff line or space. The two most common clefs we use in most music is the G or treble clef and the F or bass clef. As you can see, the G clef symbol starts on the second line from the bottom of the staff. This is indicating that that line is known as G, while in the bass clef, the second line from the top of the stave that is running between those two dots indicates the letter F. This brings us to naming the notes. Notes are named with the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Once G is reached, you start over again with A. Looking at the treble clef, as we discussed, the second line from the bottom represents the letter name G, meaning that if a note was notated on that line, it would be indicating the G note. Should a note be placed in the space above it, that note's name would be A. The note in the middle represents the note name B. Second space from the top represents C. The second line from the top represents D. The space above D represents E. And the top line represents F. The space just below the G line represents the note name letter F and the bottom line represents E. So as you can see in the treble clef, the notes from G upward are G, A, B, C, D, E, F and G. The notes from G downward are F, E and D. The range may be extended using ledger lines. We can apply the same technique to the bass clef. In the bass clef, the notes from F upward are F, G, A and B. Downward from F, they are E, D, C, B, A, G, and F. And as well, as with the treble clef, the range may be extended using ledger lines. One is also able to combine the treble and the bass clef together, giving us what is known as the grand staff. As you can see, the C that is above the bass clef and the C that is below the treble clef is the same note. These notes discussed correspond to the white notes of a keyboard. We discussed the harmonic series in the previous session. We used a frequency of 440 hertz as our fundamental frequency. That note sounds like this. And the note name of that frequency is A, above middle C. This means that the A above middle C represents the frequency of 440 hertz. The A below middle C is an octave lower than that of the A above middle C. Here is an example of C in all the different octaves. Accidentals are symbols that are placed at the front of note heads in order to alter a note's pitch. If a sharp symbol is placed in front of a note head, the note's pitch is raised by half a step. 
If a flat symbol is placed in front of the note head, then the note's pitch is lowered by half a step. A natural sign indicates that the note is neither sharp nor flat. This brings us to enharmonics. A note can have two different note names but have the same pitch. This is known as enharmonics. The note name F is also the enharmonic of E sharp. B flat's enharmonic equivalent is A sharp. C flat's enharmonic equivalent is B.